how photosynthesis takes place. Now let's discuss where it takes place. Now we do know that it takes place in the chloroplasts within a plant, but specifically it actually takes place within leaves of a plant. So let's talk about the parts of a plant that are extremely important to photosynthesis, the leaves. So do know that all plants have three main tissue systems. And this is important to know because all three main tissue systems are actually in all the parts of a plant. So we have dermal tissue, which is the protective outer covering of plants. We have vascular tissue, which supports the plant and transports needed water and nutrients throughout the plant. And we have ground tissue. Now ground tissue produces and stores sugars and helps support the plant as well. Leaves are specifically and specially adapted to allow photosynthesis to take place. And we'll see that in a couple slides. Now the function of leaves include absorbing the light from the sun and carrying out photosynthesis. So all photosynthesis happens inside the leaves right here. Alrighty, so let's start discussing some of the parts of a leaf. So this is a cross section of a leaf. So this way you're almost able to tell all the little uh, parts in the cell or in the leaf. But do know that a thin, uh, that a leaf is extremely thin. So obviously it's not this thick in reality. We're almost taking a cross section and kind of blowing it up underneath a microscope. So we have a structure called a petiole. And the petiole is right here on this leaf right here. This is the thin stalk which attaches the blade to the stem. Now the blade is the actual leaf. This is what we kind of consider to be the leaf. This is the thin flattened part used to collect sunlight. So your petiole attaches itself to this big stem and the blade is actually the leaf part where uh, it collects the sunlight. Now the dermal tissue of a leaf, there's two parts. We have what's known as the epidermis. The epidermis is made of a layer of tough, irregularly shaped cells. So if we were to take a look at the picture, the epidermis lies on the outside of a cell. Notice they aren't really all shaped the same. They're sort of irregular. So the outside tough cells are called the epidermis. We also see a cuticle on as part of the dermal tissue. The cuticle is a waterproof barrier that protects and limits water loss. And if we were to actually take the cuticle off of a leaf, it would be a very thin, almost clear or translucent layer of the leaf. You can do this with lettuce or some of the other types of leaf that you might see. Just take a pair of tweezers and you can pull very gently, you can pull the cuticle off of a leaf. We also have ground tissue within the leaf, and there's several parts of ground tissue. Now uh, we'll start with the, mesos the mesophyll. Now the photosynthesis that we talked about in the last video occurs in the meso mesophyll, which is found between the leaf veins. So your mesophyll here is basically everything within your epidermis. So from epidermis to epidermis, we have mesophyll. We have two types of mesophyll. We have the palisade mesophyll, which is found beneath the upper epidermis. So wherever the top of the blade is, we see the palisade mesophyll, and this actually absorbs the light. We then see a layer called the spongy mesophyll. And this is found bes uh, beneath the palisade layer. And this has many air spaces that are connected to the stomata. Now stomata is plural, so when we're talking about stomata, we're talking about um, plural terms. If we want singular, it's stoma. Sto so the stomata are small openings in the epidermis, usually the lower epidermis, that allow carbon dioxide, water, and oxygen to diffuse in and out of the leaf. So the stoma acts as like a gas exchange for the various things that need to go in and out of the leaf itself. So that's all the ground tissue, all that stuff in the middle there. 
Finally, we have vascular tissue. Now the vascular tissue in a leaf are kind of wrapped up together and we call them the vascular bundles. These are your xylem and your phloem. And the vascular bundles are located in leaf veins that run from stem throughout the leaf. So these are the things that actually from the root system will bring water and nutrients into the leaf itself. So the roots are very important for uh, the uptake of water and nutrients and they'll flow into the leaf through your vascular bundles. Now gas exchange, I was mentioning this to you. The stomata allow gases such as carbon dioxide, water vapor, and oxygen to enter and exit through the leaf. Now on the underside of the leaf, we have stomata. We can't see them with the naked eye, but you can figure it out. You can actually do a lab where you um, put clear nail polish, take the clear nail polish off, and you actually can see the stomata. So the plants maintain homeostasis by keeping their stomata open just long enough to allow photosynthesis to take place, but not so long that they're going to lose any excess amount of water because they want to keep as much water as they can for their processes, just like us. So they actually open and close them long enough to take those uh, processes, to take the, the time it needs for those processes, but no longer. We have things called guard cells as well. Now the guard cells surround the stomata and control their opening and closing. So the guard cells are kind of like these, <laughs> I guess these orange or these yellowy greenish things kind of around here. Now they're going to open and close as needed. So those are the guard cells. They're going to open and close the stomata. Now transpiration is actually the loss of water through the leaves. This is what the stomata is guarding against. It doesn't want the loss of water. But transpira uh, transpiration is a natural process and it actually does happen from time to time. It's part of the water cycle. And this keeps the leaves cool on hot days. So sometimes it's kind of like it's sweating. So it allows water to escape to keep it cool. Or sometimes it keeps the stomata has remained closed so it doesn't release any water. Depends upon the time of day uh, and, and the time of the process is what's going on. So this is just to show you a visual picture that the carbon dioxide goes into a stomata. The water and oxygen leave the stomata. And finally, leaves are adapted to obtain certain materials. So to obtain carbon dioxide, the leaf has a large surface area, which allows it to be exposed to as much carbon dioxide as possible. Carbon dioxide entering through the leaf, through the stomata, and it's going to diffuse its way through the air spaces and the cells throughout the leaf. So here's a little video or a little picture showing you kind of what's going on. We have all these air spaces in between here and the carbon dioxide is going to diffuse its way through the air spaces through the cells and get where it needs to go. Now to obtain sunlight, the position and the shape of the leaf will allow the surface to obtain as much sun as possible. If you notice leaves never really are sideways, they try not to be. Most of the time, the blade is actually facing the sun. So we have a large surface area which will allow the shape, uh, which will allow this, the leaf to obtain as much sunlight as possible. And leaves are also adapted to obtain water. Now, water is obtained from the soil through the roots. So the leaf itself doesn't really get water. However, the water is carried through the xylem vessels up to the leaf, which is then transported by osmosis to the mesophyll cells. So that vascular bundle inside the leaf is basically where we get the water from, or the plants get the water from. It's all connected to the root system. It brings up the water through xylem vessels right up to the leaf.